Well, welcome to Life Group. Uh, this, has been a, this is Scott Weatherford. It's been kind of a, an interesting journey. On the weekend, I talked about relationships making life rich and ish and ish ah. If you haven't listened, go back and listen. But I want to lead you on a discussion about sin. Isn't that a great topic? Because that's kind of next in the Hebrew in the Hebrew order in Genesis about sin. So we're going to look at the story of sin. Ever wonder why you do what you do? Ever wonder why you don't do what you should do? You know, like I, I said earlier in this series, my mother would say, Scott, you know better than that. Why do I do the things I don't want to do? And I don't, I don't do the things I should do. Why do I struggle with that? Well, the reason is sin. We're all sinners. We're all broken. Um, it's our nature and in our blood to be in rebellion. We're born sinners. Listen to what Paul said. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold as a slave under sin. For I did not understand what I'm doing because I do not practice what I want to do. And when I do what I hate, now if I do what I don't want to do, I agree with the law that it's good. So now that I'm no longer the, the one doing it, but the sin living in me. For I know that nothing good lives within me that is in my flesh. For I desire to do what is good is with me and there's no ability to do it. For I do not do the good that I want to do, but I practice the evil I don't want to do. Now if I do what I what I do not want, I'm no longer the one who does it, but the sin that lives in me. What a wretched man I am who will rescue me from this body of death. I read that and I'm going, this is dead gum Paul talking. It's like Mr. Super saying, what makes you think I'm better than that? I'm not. And I struggle with that. And, and I hear people say, well, human beings, people are mainly good. No, they're not. People are not mainly good. People are, are we're all broken. We're all depraved. We're all sinners. For all have sinned and fall short of God's glorious standards. It says that in Romans. But how did all this happen? So we're going to go back to Genesis 3. And we're going to look at this a little deeper. I touched on it earlier about how sin breaks our relationships and the cross restores it. I did that this weekend. But I want to go a little further with that. So let's look at this in, in just in Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say you cannot eat from any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the middle of the garden, God said, You must not eat it or touch it or you will die. No, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw the tree was good for food and delight and look at it, and it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she took some of his fruit and ate it and gave it to her husband, stupid man, who was with her, and he ate it. And the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings from this up, and they dead gum hid from God. Can you believe how dumb they were? Because Satan is a liar. He's a punk. And what he wants you to do is to think that God's holding out on you. And you know, as a matter of fact, God is holding out on you. Let me tell you what he's holding, what he's holding out on them. Sin, shame, debauchery, guilt. He was holding all that away from them. A terrible God. Good God, loving God. He was withholding that from them. But they ate anyway. And they got all the things they were expecting and more. And it broke all of us. And if there were other children in the garden, they all were broken at the same crunching of that fruit. Wow. Sin took a hold. The act of rebellion and deception has left us a mess. And everyone involved to try to blame someone else except the serpent who was behind everything all along. So sin brought about consequences. Let's listen. To the serpent you'll be cursed above all animals, crawl in his belly, be in toxic relationship with mankind, and get defeated by Jesus on the cross. In the curse, he says that you will bruise his heel, but he will bruise your head. And that's coming from him. We're going to hear more about this in, in, in a little while, in the next coming sermon series, that, uh, that this is about Jesus coming to defeat sin. And that was that phrase. And you will bruise his heel, Satan will bruise the heel of man, but Jesus, the God-man, will crush the head of Satan. It's coming. To the woman, childbirth will be dangerous and painful, and you will want to rule over your husband, and he will rule over you. Your relationship will be important to you, but they'll never be fully what you wanted them to be or desire because of sin. You're naked and ashamed. Wow. Wow. 
You'll have pain in childbirth, dangerous. Man, I, I remember when our kids were born, I was begging God to preserve Tara's life. And she was such a warrior. I mean, God, my wife is amazing. But man, it sure scared me to death. And her pain was greatly exacerbated because of sin. To the man, you'll work hard for very little. And you'll try to get yourself worth the identity by what you do. And boy, is that not true. And you're never going to miss the deep joy of relationships, of vital connection with your wife, with your children, with each other. And you're going to die and go back to dirt. And it's all going to be vanity and nothing. And all we are is dust in the wind, quoting Kansas again. And it's just like, really? And all of this explains the brokenness of our world. Disunity, shame, guilt, racism, arrogance, elitism, gossip, slander, rumor, all of this. The work of the devil and the cross and the curse of sin. What a mess. Sin has made a mess of things. But Jesus has died to clean up the mess and to make us free. The question is, how are you going to live free from the rebellion of sin? And that should lead you to some really open-hearted discussion. Maybe look at Romans 8 and find out you're more than a victor conquer through Christ. Have a great discussion. I hope this helps.